WSBA title fight. Three knockdown rule, no. Standing eight count, no. Saved by the bell, no. Scoring system, 10 point must system. That's what's gonna happen tonight in the schedule 12 rounder. We are ready for the introductions. So let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen in attendance and sports fans joining us on USA Network, we welcome you as Al Goose and Promotions in association with 10 Goose Boxing presents the main event of the evening, the USBA Super Middleweight Championship. This bout is sanctioned by the United States Boxing Federation, the supervisor at ringside, Jimmy Rondo, along with the California State Athletic Commission. Chairman is William Eastman, commissioner in attendance, Jerry Nathanson, and the assistant executive officer is Steve English. Introducing the referee in charge of this bout, we have Pat Russell. Judges at ringside from Virginia Beach, Virginia, Jim Trailer. From Los Angeles, California, Gwen Adair. From Chula Vista, California, Fritz Werner. All right, fans, here we go. This is it, the main event of the evening, the USBA Super Middleweight Championship, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right. He is fighting out of the red corner, wearing dark blue trunks with white lettering. He is representing the world-famous Ten Goose Boxing Club in North Hollywood. He weighed in 166 and one-half pounds with a fine record, unblemished, 21 wins, no losses, 14 wins by way of knockout. He is ranked the number five contender in the world by the WBA, introducing the undefeated, fabulous Frank Lyle. And his opponent across the ring. On my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this 12 round main event is the defending champion. He enters the ring wearing white trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Flint, Michigan. He weighed in 167 and three quarter pounds. His fine record includes 18 victories, no defeats, 13 wins by way of knockout. In the world, he is ranked number six contender by the WBA. Tonight, he is defending his USBA super middleweight crown. How about a hand for the fighter they call the doctor of style, Tim Little. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Pat Russell, now to give instructions. We got our instructions back in the dressing room. Let's have a good fight. 12 rounds, touch your gloves. Let's go. The champion with Lou Duva in his corner, Tim Littles, making his first defense of the USBA super middleweight title. Ranked number five by the WBA, as you saw. He's also ranked fifth in the world by the IBF. But the WBC has him ranked 18th. That's eight spots behind his opponent tonight. And Little starts out with a quick right hand. These two used to be roommates in amateur competition as they uh, did the international scene. But that's when they were at different weight classes. Uh, their relationship has changed since that time. Little, of course, says that... Uh, there's controversy surrounding all three of his losses to Lyles uh, as an amateur. And he also said, Tim Little said, that once we're inside the ropes, we can't be friends. And he started off this fight like that. He wanted to establish the control early, establish that control in the first round. Now, you look at Frank Lyles, tall, slender, and a left-hander. Left-handers are so difficult to fight. What Little should do is use feints with a controlling jab, try to take Lyles to the later rounds. Lyles has never been past eight. Two fighters have uh, racked up a good number of knockouts. 13 for Littles in his 18 wins, 14 for Lyles in his 21, but both fighters have uh, not uh, faced the uh, list of uh, championship contenders. As a matter of fact, the edge that Littles may have over Lyles in this fight is the fact that Littles beat Antoine Bird for the championship, and that was uh, probably his, well, no question, his biggest uh, name on the ledger. And Frankie Lyles hasn't had that kind of a fight yet. You know, Lou Duva in the corner of Littles says all his fighters have had that kind of uh, pivotal fight early. Holyfield against uh, Kawi, 
Whitaker 20 fought the uh, Raul Ramirez. Eldrick Taylor uh, early against Robin Blake and Antoine Bird served that purpose for Tim Littles but for Lyles I guess Littles is this fight. And uh, Lyles has never gone beyond eight rounds. Littles has uh, went the 12 against Bird. Littles feels that he is just more suited for the pro game. He thinks he has come along at this stage quicker than Lyles has uh, since their amateur days four years ago. Keep him up, says Pat Russell. A little low blow from Tim Littles. But then again, Sean, there is that uh, I have your number theory, even though, of course, granted it was in the amateurs, but Lyles knows he has beaten this guy three times. Right, and that's a psychological advantage that a lot of fighters get over their opponent. You beat your opponent mentally first, and it's, then you, it's easy to beat him physically. You know, in this first round, Tim Littles is very impressive. Good punches, moving forward behind his shots, establishing punches. And he doesn't seem to ha be having any trouble with the southpaw stance, but he's staying right on top of his opponent. Hollywood Palladium. That's the scene of tonight's USA's Tuesday night fights. And you are watching the USBA Super Middleweight Championship. Round number two, it's scheduled for 12. The champion is in the white trunks. Tim Littles, the 27-year-old, now resides in Saginaw, Michigan. Against the 27-year-old challenger, Frankie Lyles. Who was born in New York City, grew up in Syracuse. Started uh, his pro career in Detroit as a member of the Kronk team, but uh, in 91 moved out here to California, where he is continuing his professional step career. Up, step up, don't and he, Frank Lyles, is a fighter much like Michael Nunn, former middleweight champion of the world. He's a southpaw, quick moves, fast hands. And he brings a lot of confidence in these fights with him. In fact, in the Daily News today, talked about him, Frank Lyles, wanting to fight Michael Nunn to get vengeance for the Goosen family, which Michael Gun Nunn was uh, brought up by, and uh, decided to fight for other people. You know, uh, Littles likes to uh, work off the jab. We haven't seen too much. Now he's starting to put the jab out there, but uh, having some difficulties uh, in establishing the jab against Lyles. That left, that left jab, as we talked about before, the most important weapon in boxing. But under those southpaw opponents, it's hard to get that thing working because their right hand blocks it. So if you can't use the jab, then you can't punch in combinations, the jab and the right hand. If you can't get the one-two going, you can't throw the hook. There was a flash of heads. A little the little concerned is cut, wiping at his head. Well, he's gone up against the southpaw. He's also uh, the reach disadvantage for Littles. Gives up six inches. Littles from Flint. I may have mentioned Saginaw recently. Oh, and Littles uh, connects. Lyles backing up. Well, he got punched by Littles and almost got uh, shot by our camera in the back of the head. So Littles is uh, very aggressive, puts the pressure on, moving in. Just like Ruelas in the earlier fight, certainly a sense of uh, revenge in the mind of Littles to wipe out his defeats as an amateur, the hands of Frankie Lyles. Now he's into the big time. Good looking prospect is Littles. And a lot of pressure from Littles. And here's why, he's got Lyles hurt right now. Lyles still doesn't have everything with him. He's still, he's still kind of out just a bit. So Lyle, Littles is trying to test him now, trying to see where he is, see if he can take these shots. See, as an amateur, Littles also was uh, more of a stand-up guy, but now uh, under the tutelage of the Duva team, George Benton in the corner. This is and, and look at he looks up immediately to yes. Benton to listen for instructions, but he's been bobbing and weaving a little more as a pro. Let's try to listen in. This is the winning in third round. Corner in boxing. Georgie Benton, Lou Duva, and Ace Murata. Here's a look. 
And the two banging heads in that second round. Trying to move in is Tim Littles. And also moving in is Frank Lyles and Bing. Now, with that southpaw stance, you can't reach out and grab your opponent like you can against the right-handers. They, they come at you differently. It's confusing. You've got to watch out for their heads and their hands. Yeah, the sigh of relief uh, from Tim Littles. Uh, happy that he wasn't or didn't have to put Ace Murata to work. And very quickly, referee Pat Russell is there. Wipes off the gloves of Lyles. And something else that happens, those front feet, when you're fighting a left-handed fighter, your front feet are so close together that you're constantly stepping on your opponent's toe. When you, if you can step on his toe and then punch him, you'll knock him down. Or you could trip him. Both fighters working up the sweat. Very quickly, there is an exchange. Another advantage Littles has. He's been more active than Lyles. Since last July, a year ago, Lyles has had just three fights and a total of four rounds. He's done some quick work, quick damage, but uh, not getting rounds in. In that time, Littles has fought 29 rounds, and Littles connecting again. And this just comes from gym work. All these things that Littles is doing in the ring, he has practiced over and over in the gym. You win or lose fights in the gym, not in the ring. You have to do your homework. This is the coaching of Georgie Benton. There he is. Is he down? Yeah, I believe they stepped on it. I believe they stepped on each other's feet. Uh. You know, those front feet so close together, you can see them. They're constantly stepping on each other's yeah, toes. But if, if, if Littles had his uh, knee on the canvas and happened to be hit at the same time, should that be recorded as a knockdown? A fluky one, but... Well, many times it is, but the referee many times does not see it. Referee Pat Russell, good left hook. Now, th those southpaws are susceptible to that left hook because of the way they stand. Look at the, the right hand of Frank Lyles right in front of his face. There's why he's getting hit with the left hook. Littles. If he could bring that left hook up like Rafael Ruelas had up around his right ear, he would protect himself from that hook. You see that? The height difference. Lyles uh, three and a half inches taller than Littles and has a six inch reach advantage. Littles says he was going to look out for the right hook of Lyles, as you saw it there. Lyles tries to load up on the right hook, and then when he throws uh, that right hook, Littles looks to counter. He intended to go to the body, because you remember in the amateur days, uh, Lyles uh, didn't like the body shots, but then again, who does? Well, anybody that likes <laughs> the end the body shots. Yeah. And part of the strategy is to wear Lyles down. Lyles has never gone beyond eight. And this was scheduled for 12. Littles danced 12 rounds with uh, Antoine Bird four months ago to win this championship. Coming up in a couple of weeks right here on USA's Tuesday Night Fights. We're off next week, and then we are back in action with a former heavyweight champ, Tim Witherspoon. As he continues on his road, hoping uh, to get a shot somewhere in the near future. Takes the 37 wins uh, into the ring against uh, Everett Bigfoot Martin. Bigfoot who has uh, tested all the contending heavyweights uh, on the way up. So that action from the third round. Nice angles from Tim Littles. Trying to move around. And then with the feet getting tangled up, front feet getting tangled up. Trying to move around, Frank Lyles. Here's more action, and the feet, pay attention to the front feet, getting tangled up. That'll happen all night when you're fighting these left-handed fighters. Two great amateur stars, Frankie Lyles and the Dark Trunks, the challenger in this one, the National Golden Gloves champion. Tim Littles in the White Trunks, the champion in the USBA super middleweight division, was a national amateur champion. Matter of fact, it was Lyles who beat Littles in the uh, 1988 Olympic trial semifinals. Fourth round action. Littles are looking to load up with the right hand. Ooh. Good combination, that left hook. Right hand to the body and left hook to the head. Tim Littles.
Frankie Lyles must get that left jab, I mean, that right jab going. A jabbing left-hander is hard to beat. And because the way he moves, look how he moves. Frank Lyles moves to his right. He moves around behind Tim Littles. When you have a, a southpaw that can do that, the right-hander constantly has to reset that back foot. They can't reach the right hand around. And once again, a slip by Littles. Front feet. Now, Tim Littles and Lou Dufa feel that Littles has made more of the transition to the pro ranks than Lyles. That Lyles doesn't have the skills compared to Littles as a pro. In watching so far here into the fourth round, what do they mean by that? What do you see that uh, perhaps backs up what they say? Well, Tim Littles is more mature as a professional. He's taken his time. You look where his shots are landing, like that overhand right. And they're landing right on the mark, right where he's putting them. And also, he's using some probing shots. Watch him use this left jab. He's not using that left jab to, to kill his opponent. He's using that left jab just to put it out there, let the opponent go for that left jab. Then what do you hit him with? Hit him with the right. There he is again. On the other hand, you look at Frank Lyles, and he's trying, he's desperately trying to figure out what he can do in his mind, trying to see what will work. He's waiting a little bit too much. There's a big left hook. And Lyles still more the straight up approach, and, and Littles bobbing, weaving, moving around, getting angles. More like a professional. The amateurs, you try to hit your opponent as often as you can. It doesn't matter how hard the punches are. You just hit him as many times as you can. In the pros, you can hit him with that just that one punch, and the fight's over. I mean, look, at, look at Gutierrez the first time that he played through Ellis. One shot, and the fight's over. And also, in these, in these professional fights, you see the old professionals who rarely miss a shot. They don't waste any punches. Round number five, the USBA Super Middleweight Championship, defending is Tim Littles, his first defense. After winning the title from Antoine Bird four months ago, Frankie Lyles is the challenger in the dark trunks, and uh, Littles uh, heard it from his corner in between rounds. Uh, not particularly happy with the last uh, round performance. You're trying to take the guy out with one punch. You don't take him out with one punch. Until you get close. Then you don't just gotta move up because yeah. the guy's tall. You can't do an outside looking. Yeah. Get up there. Okay. Right then, let's get going. Yeah. You gotta get close to this guy. Just get under this guy. A very animated corner. Tim Little's hearing it from Lou Duva and Georgie Benton. Well, what they want for Littles to do is throw in combinations. Littles is hurting Lyles with one punch. He rocks him. They can see Lyles legs wobbling and if, if only Littles would connect with another punch the fight would be over animated corner I thought you were going to talk about Fred Flintstone that, that many in boxing feel like Lou Duva is Fred Flintstone there are the front feet once again getting, uh, getting together Lou Duva one of the best trainers coaches in boxing great motivator in that corner that is a terrific corner he motivates Georgie Benton is a great strategist in boxing, and then Ace Morata is a wonderful cut man. In fact, I used him when I fought for the championship of the world. He's very good. Uh, watch your head, step out, let's go. Watch your head. And I'm sure he was really put to use. He was once. once. Yes, once on my, uh, over my eye. Thanks. Thanks, Al. We've talked about that before, right? Well, actually, one time, Lou Duva had somebody throw a punch at him and he got cut in a fight and uh, Ace Murata Ace fixed the cut. Right there. <laughs> he doesn't go anywhere without Ace. Now, they also want for Tim Littles to put more pressure on Lyles to stay on top of him. If you're on top of your opponent, you don't know whether he's southpaw or mm -hmm. right-handed or northpaw or what he is. You get right on top of him, he doesn't know either. That so diffuses the issue. Yeah. And there he is on top and they also feel if, the, if, if, if Littles can move Lyles back, that he really oh. can't get off. And the combinations, if the combinations come, this, this fight is over. And they know it. Lyles should know it. You saw the big right hand, the overhand right that staggered Frank Lyles. What they want Littles to do is throw the right and then come back right with the left immediately. No question, as you see this unfold, Tim Little's uh, very much the busier of the two fighters. 
Five rounds down. It's scheduled for 12. Action in that fifth round. Feet again tangling up. Moving in a little bit too far as Frank Lyles did not have his balance. Down he went. Kind of ran himself down. Well, fighters certainly have been down on the canvas, but uh, no knockdowns to this point. A lot of slipping, a lot of sweat. And a lot of rocking. Frank Lyles has been tagged several times with the overhand right. Good combination from Lyles. Right here you have two former amateur stars. Both turn pro. They're doing with first round knockouts. Both undefeated. They're both 27 years old. And you look at that and think about these two young men in the ring. Both of them good amateur fighters, but what you see is one fighter who spent a lot of time in the gym. He's got a lot of excellent instructions. He has worked to improve his skill, and you see another fighter who changed managers, had problems outside the ring, hasn't quite gotten it together as a professional boxer. Frank Lyles is a good boxer, but he just needs, he just needs some finishing touches. Now keep in mind, Sean, uh, Lyles again has, has never gone beyond eight. That was the case for Littles until his last fight when he went 12 against Bird. And in that fight, Littles said he, he really, uh, in the middle rounds, like these rounds right here, got winded. He caught his second win in the eighth and ninth and felt stronger in 12. So, you know, perhaps uh, he may be getting winded here. And the same breath we might mention that Frank Lyles could possibly be going through the same experience. Frank well, Frank Lyles could be in the process of getting his second win, and I certainly hope that's true for him. However, without this experience, you really don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen when you get to those later rounds. That's what you that's why you want to go into a fight, a late round fight, but you want it on your own terms. You want to fight somebody that's not the champion. You know, sometimes you know, work it in the gym, go the, the 12 round distance. And now he's having a difficult time in there with a tough fighter like Tim Littles, the champion. He has to take it away from him. Uh, and, and Tim Littles has really improved a lot since we've even seen him. Doing a lot of sparring with uh, Cecil Pettigrew, we've seen many years ago in USA. Tough competitor. Early night on, on the card, Greg Haugen, former lightweight champion, and time permitting, we'll take a look at uh, his fight earlier. There's something else, Al, that, that plays an important role is this, the confidence of being a champion. Tim Littles is just acting like he's in a, a champion inside those ropes, and this is a town to act like that. They gotta walk straight to him. Uh -huh. They gotta got got use both hands. Forget about one punch, understand? They gotta go combinations with this guy. Settle down. Yeah, it's him. Don't be doing swings. Right. They gotta yeah. get close to this guy and punch. Come on. With two hands now. Sean, that seems like a replay of uh, two rounds ago in the corner, but the same instructions from uh, Duva and Benton. It has been a couple of rounds that they've been telling Littles to throw in combinations. Littles can hurt Lyles with the one punch, but he's not putting him away. And they want, obviously, they want him to put Littles out. Oh, good right jab. Right jab, and now you look at a different Frank Lyles. He's using that jab, and he's getting some extension on it and some reach. Watch him use that jab and then take a half step back. Good 
good combination by Laos. Now this is where Duba does not want for Tim Littles to be. He wants Littles to move inside that reach. He wants Littles to smother the punches of Lyles. Well, do you think that Littles is having difficulty moving in because of something that Lyles is doing? Yes, that right jab, and then he's moving back. Watch him throw that right jab, and then he's moving back. And on the inside, trying to tie up. Now the hand's free. Now Littles is complaining that he was held by Lyles and took it out on him with those uh, shots to the back of the head. Referee Pat Russell having his hands full in this one. Anytime your opponent lets you have a free hand, you should use it. And, and I, I respect Tim Little for, for doing that. And he stopped him from tying you up. You know, hit behind the head, though. That's what the referee was upset about. Tim Littles, the USBA Super Middleweight Champion, putting the title on the line, his first defense. And now trying, good job by him. Look at him go downstairs to try to get, curb some of this movement. See Lyles now doing a good job of stepping around behind Littles. Littles trying to slow him down downstairs to the body. Two former amateur roommates in international competition representing the United States. At that point, the Littles was fighting at 156. Lyles was the lighter of the two at 147. They roomed together, but once they hit the same weight, they uh, kind of separated when they knew they'd be fighting against one another. Knowing Lou Duba as I do, I can assure you that they will have a lot of work in the gym. What he's going to try to do is get Littles to have more confidence in him. If he tells Littles to go out and throw combinations, Littles has to just forget everything else, go out and throw the combinations. Going downstairs with Tim Littles, trying to slow down that movement again. We'll pause now for these words from our local cable systems. Tim Littles does not like the holding on and the wrestling that Frank Lyles is doing. Here he is nailing the back of the head of Lyles. The referee did not like that. In fact, between rounds, that seventh and eighth round, the referee, Pat Russell, went to the corner and told Littles, you hit him in the back of the head again, I'm taking a point. But I, he also warned Lyles for holding and said the same thing. So Pat Russell trying to clean things up here. Everybody could get a point taken away. I think he's going to take a point away from you for, for mentioning that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I going to be in a hole <laughs> with one point taken away. One point behind. Yeah. Read your score. Minus one. The draw. Out. Even if I win, I'll get the draw. If you get a knockout, you get a draw. <laughs> That's how far I'm behind. Good change in, to ta in, in, in tactics last round. For Frank Lyles, he's stepping back more, he's giving more room to Littles, and then he's trying to hit him. Combination there by Littles. Garner wants him to move under the chest of Frank Lyles. Lyles, when he throws his punches, he pops his head up in the air. If Littles could see that, he could nail him. He just brings that head up a little bit. You're taught to tuck your chin down behind your shoulders. And that are those, those little things that professionals, there's little things that they, the little differences that professional trainers can make in your, in your performance. And the difference between the great fighters and the good fighters are that the great fighters do the basics perfectly. Great fighters do good over and over and over and over. Lyles are backpedaling. Seems to have that anxiety in the ring, almost stepping in the bucket. I think a bucket in his hand right now. I think defensively. Ten little drop of him. 30 seconds on the nose and around the parade. It's a 12 round championship fight. Two undefeated records on the line. Lyles at 21 and 0. Littles has won all 18 of his fights. Very impressed with the change in Lyles' style. The, the, the Lyles style. 
now moving back more, giving more ground, and boxing his opponent, getting the extension, full extension on his punches. Littles is confused now. Witherspoon in a couple of weeks. Three weeks from now on USA, another former heavyweight champion, Michael Dokes, who feels that he too is still in the picture, working his way closer and closer to his 50th win. Goes up against a journeyman in Jesse Ferguson. That's coming up three weeks in Atlantic City, right here on the Tuesday Night Fights. The Hollywood Palladium is the site of this edition of Tuesday Night Fights, ninth round, USBA Super Middleweight Championship. Defending is the man in the right, Tim Littles, the challenger, and the man in the dark trunks, Frankie Lyles. This is the first time that Lyles has been beyond eight. And we'll see if strategy changes here in the uh, last third of this uh, fight. No, it did change in that seventh round, and I was impressed because that's... And uh, once again, a slip. That's because of the angle of the feet. And those left-handed fighters, they sometimes can get the angle on you. Moving to, you, to his right, like Lyles is, is moving around behind Tim. I may add, uh, Sean, the three slip rule is not in effect. <laughs> They're not wearing slips. <laughs> well, it's about the third time that uh, Littles has uh, slipped to the canvas. Little fight has been known to face main competition. The knockout ratios are high. Littles 13 KOs and 18 wins. Miles has 14 KOs and 21. But uh, they, they really has the reputation of a big puncher, especially not a one-punch knockout artist. And you can tell that was what Lou Duva and Georgie Benton talking about in the corner the last few rounds. Throw the combinations. You can't do it in one punch. Although Lyles, uh, as Littles has uh, commented earlier, can load up with that right hook and probably more effective on one punch. But they do want him to throw combinations. It is difficult to get you unless you're a Tommy Hearns or it's somebody with a one knockout punch power, like a Carlos Monson or sometimes Tyson, that snap. Witherspoon is that way, that snap right on the end. Sometimes if you don't have that, you're not going to put your opponents out unless you throw the combinations. We talked about in the sixth round about Lyles perhaps getting his second win. You know what? He's got his second win now. What happens when you get your second win, you get so tired that you feel like you can't go on anymore. And then suddenly you say, you get that second win and you say, hey, I can go on some more. I'm okay. You get the confidence of going those rounds. The only problem for him is, was it too little, too late? No pun intended. Too little, too late. Well, take a close look at the left eye of Tim Littles. Looks like uh, swelling there. Now starting to close and bothering him. There's why. Lyle's coming on. Tenth round action, Frank Lyles coming on the last few rounds. As a matter of fact, Sean, as I peek over your shoulder hey. and your uh, official, unofficial scorecard. No looking. You, you the judge's scorecard cannot be revealed until the fight's over. But I rely on yours. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. That's one mistake I've oh, made in no. my life. <laughs> but anyway, you gave Littles the first six rounds, but now you've given Lyles the last three. Well, we talked about, rounds. and you talked about the second wind of a fighter, and it would appear that he, that Lyles got the second wind in that seventh round. He, because ever since that seventh round, he's been boxing better and getting full extension on his punches. He's been maneuvering around Tim Littles. That's between rounds, they want Littles just to walk right through Lyles. They, 
Duva said he can't punch, it can't hurt you, just walk right through him. Well, it's easy for uh, Lou and Georgie Benton to say. Right. Meanwhile, Little's eye is closed. Oh, Little's is saying, well, you better watch that referee because somebody's <laughs> nailing me. <laughs> That's right. Who is it? It's Chevy Chase, the invisible man. He's in the ring Fred here Flintstone. in Hollywood. Fred Flintstone's hit me. It is round number 10. Now, remember, in the only other time Little's fought 12 against Bird when he won this title, he said that uh, he was uh, winded in the middle rounds, but then got stronger in the last few. So we'll see if uh, perhaps uh, that scenario repeats itself. fighter than we saw the first six rounds. First of this six round, he was he was lazy, laying in there, allowing for Littles to hit him. Blood now coming from the mouth of Frankie Lyles. Ooh, a low blow. And Lyles steps back. Corner of Lyles. He's yelling out, stick him, stick him, use that jab. You know, sometimes you got to do something to turn the fight around. Sometimes, sometimes fighters hit their opponents low to make them mad so they'll stand in there and trade with them. Right now, Littles is having so much trouble with the movement of Frankie Lyles. It's the jab that is uh, doing it. In the last round, blood coming from his mouth. Apparently, there is a cut in his mouth, either his lip or inside. The referee brought the doctor into the corner, but Frankie Elias will continue that, into the 11th. That cut is right on the right corner of his eye, of his uh, mouth. Mouth, mouth. Yeah, mouth, that thing that you talk out of. It's right <laughs> just on the right corner, right on the edge, and it's just split. And there's why, the left hook from Tim Littles has done the damage uh, on, the, on the mouth. This oh. is really ugly. I don't know how long this can go. Now you see the eye of Tim Littles is closing. And the mouth of Frankie Lyles is opening. <laughs> and the, the mouth of Al Albert is opening. <laughs> and Pat Russell, the referee between uh, rounds, uh, was told by the doctor to keep a close eye on it. And he said he would. Close eye on it? Okay. <laughs> a close eye on the mouth, not on the eye. <laughs> well, meanwhile, Lyles has been uh, surging back in the last four rounds. But right now in deep trouble because of the cut, a very unusual looking cut. Scheduled for 12. Little's moving in. Well, that cut is in a difficult place, too. It's right in the corner of his mouth where you, you constantly open your mouth. And you ask us to when you're fighting, but it'll take a long time to heal. I guess you can open your mouth wider, though. I would say it's pretty difficult to eat. You brush your teeth, I mean, you could just go on and on. That's a wicked, that's a bad position. Ouch, that hurts. But the loud jab opened up midway. Has helped turn the fight. Sean O'Grady has this one. Six rounds to four. Littles, Littles winning the first six rounds. Lyles coming on for the last four. So certainly heading with this uh, situation into a possible draw. Well, a draw, the champion retains his title. But I tell you, Frankie Lyles looks better the last part of this this fight he's never been past eight rounds before he's looked better the last part of this fight than he did the first part if he could just have somebody else stand in for the first six rounds then he picks it up after that he'd, he'd have more luck we had mentioned earlier since last july Lyles has had three fights in a total of four rounds but uh, looked uh, well prepared and uh, going a 12 round distance Never gone past eight. Little's won 12 once in winning the title. So 
Beautiful boxing by Lyle. And a feverish finish to the 11th. He's 11 down and one to go. Again with that bad pot to slice. 